heat loss. Because okay. this will be a heated space as well. Uh -huh. Oh, and another thing on, on, uh, uh, on this type of framing is you use a single top plate and then your rafters line up with your studs so it eliminates the need for a double top plate uh -huh. um, because your rafter loads transfer right down to your studs. Uh -huh. The reason you have double top plates is because you can put anything anywhere you want it. Mm -hmm. And the top plates, two top plates act as a header. Uh -huh. But if you, you know, lay out your framing carefully enough, you don't need that. Mm -hmm. And the inspectors didn't have any No, no, it's, it's legal. Questions? It's, a, okay. it's a legal framing. Okay. Yeah, this is, this is pretty cool doing this. And the 23% reduction in 2x4s is pretty impressive. It's a big cost savings, right? Cost, yeah, the labor, it's fast to labor because it's less wood to put up. You save on um, the material itself and you get a higher R value in the wall. So it really makes so sense. So now we're in the living room and uh, Terry's going to point out something really interesting uh, in the ceiling here. Okay. So what is it? Uh, this is uh, an ERV, which is the also the brother of a HRV. An HRV is a heat recovery ventilator and an ERV is an energy recovery ventilator. They have, they're both do the same thing. They're both heat exchangers. However, an ERV um, recaptures more moisture, correct? Yeah. Um, not the best suited for, for this climate. We don't need to recapture moisture, but um, this is all I could get. Uh, it's a miniature um, heat recovery. And what it does is, because we made the house so tight, airtight, that you get into the problem of you need to recover, you need to get outside air in. And the um, ASHRAE standards for if you get a house below 0 0.35 air exchanges per hour, you have to bring in mechanical air. You have to you know, bring it in, or you can open doors and windows, but a lot of people don't. So um, traditionally you would put in, if, you, if the house got too tight, you put in a bathroom fan or some kind of a fan and you would run it and it would basically take any air that's in the house and just blow it outside. So that would be cooled air or heated air. This does the same thing. It takes the air in the house and it blows it out. But what it does that's different than a bathroom fan is it, the, on the way, when the indoor air is being exited, on its way out it goes through a heat exchanger and the heat exchanger pulls out the heat that's being exhausted and reintroduces uh, it back into the, uh, to the, the heated envelope. This is pulls 66% of the heat out of the exiting air and puts it back into the building. If you put a bathroom fan in and exhausted it, you would lose 100% of your air just being blown out. So you're heating it, blowing it out, heating it, blowing it out. This at least does the same thing, but at least it recovers some of the heat loss. So that's why they call it a recovery ventilator, because it recovers heat loss. Um, this is a really cool thing. It's made by Panasonic, and I don't know anybody that makes a small mini one. It's not really... In a whole house system, you'd have a larger heat recovery ventilator, but for our application, this is a beautiful thing. It works really well. Um, not too costly, about $300, <coughs> and it solves the air exchange problem without a, a lot of energy loss. It's also very, very quiet. We ran it, and it's just it's barely audible. Um, so this, I call this the iron lung because it, it's, when the house can't breathe on its own, this will and it's in the, uh, it's, this, it could have an off and on switch or you can run it 24 and 7 um, if you open doors and windows you never have to use this um, but in the heating and cooling phase when doors and windows are closed you would want to use this to, for, to make sure you have fresh air okay. yeah well, thanks so much. Yeah. So we're just going to wrap this up, but uh, Peter's going to explain the before and after. Um, so, you know, I guess tell us what are all these figures here? Okay, so in the classroom, we learn about the need for ventilation, and we learn about the test equipment that you determine how leaky a building is. And the blower door is the standard piece of equipment, and you have shots on that in the test site that we went to up in Santa Rosa. Uh, you set up a fan in the doorway. Uh, generally, you depressurize the house, you blow air out of the house, and you see how fast it leaks back in, and that gives you a measure, a standardized measure of how leaky the building is. And the standard for the industry is that you depressurize the house to 50 pascals, which is about the equivalent to a 20, mi 20 mile an hour wind blowing on all surfaces of the house simultaneously. 
Of course, that's an unnatural con condition. You never have the wind coming from all directions at the same time, but that's what you simulate for the sake of seeing how leaky the house is. And when we first did that, before we started any work at all at this house, uh, we found 13, 30, 1303, 1303 cubic feet per minute was leaking into the house in order to maintain that negative pressure inside the house. Now, a cubic foot is about one basketball's worth of air. So you can imagine chucking 1,300 of those basketballs out the front door to keep the negative pressure of 50 pascals. And meanwhile, 1,300 basketballs of air were leaking in through all the different holes and crannies in the roof, in the, down through the ceiling, around the windows, around the doors, through the floor. So just recently, after doing the floor and the walls, but not having yet completed the attic, we did another blower door test and it's now down at 330. Wow. So we've eliminated almost 1,000 cubic feet of air infiltration per hour for that test, which is a dramatic reduction. And another way to look at it, what Terry was talking about in terms of air changes per hour for ventilation and feeling that the air is fresh inside a house, when we started out with the 1,303 cubic feet per minute, that translates into, in one hour, 0.6, almost two-thirds of the air in the house would have been replaced just through all the natural leakage that was occurring here. That's been now knocked down to 0.15, almost one quarter the value. So the structure is becoming much more tight and much more energy efficient as a consequence because it means when you're heating up in the wintertime, you're not going to be losing the heat through all those cracks. And it also means it's going to be much healthier because you don't have the air coming from the attic, coming from the crawl space, leaking in through uncontrolled spaces. And a final way to look at it is to say that specific leakage area, this is the size of the hole. If you took all these little cracks and crannies and nooks and leaks and under the doors and around the windows and put them together into one hole, it would be a hole that would measure 6.6 .6 for each square foot of conditioned floor area, for, for each square foot of living space here. And that's been now knocked down to 1.7. So basically the size of the hole, if you put them all together in one place, the size has been cut down again by about a quarter. Wow. So that's with the aim of energy efficiency is to reduce your air infiltration so you don't have losing your warm or cool air to the outside, mm -hmm. to make it more insulating so the heat doesn't go, the heat isn't lost through the walls, and then to have clean, safe, healthy air uh, uh, ventilation to be able to be able to have a healthy breathing space. Okay. That's good. Well, thanks so much. It's been really Good. great to get uh, nice the tour and, yeah. and seeing all the improvements. Good. Um, I hope to have you back when the project is done. Yeah, and we look forward. There's actually a passive house out back that there will that, be, there there will be there that we're going to look at. There's a design now that goes even farther. This was a what we call a deep energy retrofit. We took an existing house, and we're doing the best we can to make it energy saving with all the challenges that Terry's talked about. On the new house, we're going to start from scratch and have it designed to be much tighter to start with. So it'll be even better in terms of energy saving. Well, great. Yep. Well, look forward to really seeing that as well. Good. Great. Um, and this is Yako for Builder.com. Um, thanks for watching. And for more videos like this, please visit our website at Builder.com.